How's it going guys, Matt here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about this. No, this isn't just a picture of a 3D print taken in a light box. If you look a little bit closer, you actually be able to tell it's a computer render of the G-code, of the toolpath of the print itself. I can see this being really useful for people running print-on-demand services, so they can send their clients pictures of what the print will actually look like, um, at different layer heights, showing the individual extrusions, all the different intricacies that um, go into a 3D print that other people not involved might not know about. Or even people running um, Etsy services selling 3D prints, they can render in different colors, um, upload the images easily without having to print the things themselves. So stick around to find out how I did it with a new feature that's just been implemented into Prusa Slicer. As I said, this feature has just been put into the alpha version of Prusa Slicer, and basically what it allows you to do is export the G-code preview that it shows you inside the software as an OBJ file, which you can then import into any rendering software you like um, and render it however you'd like, any materials, colors, anything like that, and make it look like an actual 3D print. So first things first, let's head over to Prusa Slicer and I'll show you how to export the G-code preview. So here I am in Prusa Slicer, I'm in version 2.1.0 beta 2, but the beta 1 also has this same feature that we're going to be using. And uh, later on, once everything's finalized, it'll also be put into the um, final release as well. But for now we're just using the beta, and you can see I've loaded in a lattice cube just as a test, and I'm just going to hit slice, and then we'll be able to export the toolpath as a 3D file once it's finished doing that. So here we are. Um, also worth mentioning, I just sliced with my normal settings. Um, I think this is 0.2 millimeter layer height. So obviously if you zoom in here into the preview, you can see all the individual layers. You can see the individual extrusion lines on this top solid infill. Um, and that's all gonna come out in our render as well when we export this toolpath. So to do that, I'm just gonna go up to File, Export, and you can see there's a new option here, export toolpaths as obj file. And we can hit that and save it. It's going to take a little while, it does export quite large files, they're pretty complex because they have to include all the individual extrusions. Um, even internally, it's including all the infill, all the internal perimeters, everything like that. So now that that's exported, we can open up Blender, which is the render software that I'm going to be using for this. You can use whatever you'd like, but I'm going to be using Blender for this tutorial, um, and we'll go from there. Alright guys, so here we are in Blender, I've just opened it up, and as you can see when we start, it's got this uh, cube loaded in in the middle by default. So we're going to get rid of that, we can just press X to delete, and then press Enter to confirm. Now before we go any further, there's just a couple other settings that I want to change, and the first one is switching the render engine, which you can see up here, from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Cycles Render is a more accurate um, physical real world based rendering engine that works by simulating the path of light rays. Um, it's just better all around, so we're going to be going with Cycles Render. And in addition to that, if we go to File and User Preferences and go to the Input tab, switch Select With to Left Click, which I've already done. Um, for some people, it defaults to Right Click, so definitely switch that to Left Click for the default and then click Save User Settings. Now after that, before we load in our um, toolpath preview, I'm just going to create a kind of scene for it to sit in. So I'm going to create a ground plane and some walls, um, and we're going to set up some lighting as well before I import it. So to do that, to add in a ground plane, I'm going to go Add, Mesh, and Plane. And you can see that's just brought in a little plane there. To scale it up, what I'm going to do is move the mouse close to it to start with, then hit S for scale and move the mouse away. And you can see that's scaling it up. Now, if we want to view through the camera, what the camera would see when we're rendering, we can hit the number zero and that's going to show us a preview of what our render is going to look like. So I'm going to scale this up a bit more until it fills the whole frame, just like that. Again, just with the S key. Now I'm going to add in some walls as well. So I'm just going to add in another plane, add mesh plane. And with this one, I'm going to move it up. So to do that, I'll press G 
that's the move tool, and then I'll press Z on the keyboard. That constrains it to movement in the Z axis. So I'll move it up to about here, and then I'm gonna rotate it. So there's two ways you can do that. You can either press R, that allows you to freely rotate it, and again, you can strain it with X, Y, Z, just like that. Or we can come over here, let's drag this out, pull up this little tab here, and we can change the rotation by exactly 90 degrees. So I'll just type that in there. Then I'm going to move it along the Y axis, again, G, Y, move it back a bit, and then I'll scale it up. And that's looking good. And I'll do the same thing again over on this side. So we'll go Add, Mesh, Plane. I'm going to bring it up. And then this time, rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. Oop. Now I can move that over. G, X this time. And then scale it up. All right, let's see how that looks. I'm pretty happy with that. We've got some walls in the background and we've got a ground plane. So now it's time to import our model. So to do that, we'll go File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ. Now you can see here, we've got two files that Prisa Slice are exported. There's an OBJ file and also an MTL file that's exported with the same name. MTL is a material file. It actually goes along in conjunction with the OBJ file. So if we just click the OBJ, it will import the MTL along with it by default. So I'm just clicking that and then import OBJ. Might take a little while. All right, so it's finished importing here, um, but we can't currently see it in our frame. It's nowhere to be seen, except for in this little file viewer here. The reason we can't see it is just because it's so large and offset from the origin. Um, so if we zoom out quite a bit, keep zooming, now it starts to come into our frame. So I'm gonna select it and then set this rotation back to zero degrees. So it's back upright. Now to bring it back down um, to the scale of our room, I'm gonna select the model and then press S and bring that down to scale it down. And I'm just gonna keep scaling it down until it's where I want it to be. So that's probably a good size. I can check through the camera angle again by pressing zero. Um, and it's a little off center, so I can press the G key, move it around. You'll be able to notice when I'm moving it, it's actually dropping below the ground plane. So to stop that from happening, I can press X to constrain it to the X axis, and then G Y to constrain it to the Y axis, um, just until it's moved to the position I want. So there it is. Now if I go to scale again, it's actually using a point over here as its origin. So to change that, I can go set origin and then origin to center of mass. Wait for that to compute. There you go. Now it's reset the origin back to the center of that model. So now when I scale, it's going to scale from that center point, which is more convenient for us. So I'll bring it up a little bit just until it's sitting on top there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So it's filling our frame. <clears throat> Next, what we're going to do is set the materials for this model. So you would have been able to tell, obviously, it's loaded in with the default colors from Prusa Slicer. Where we can change that is by going to the materials tab over here. And you can see we've got a bunch of materials here. The reason for that is in that materials file, it's set um, a different material for internal, external perimeters, the infill, Every different feature in Prusa Slicer, there's a different material for that here. So I'm just going to delete each of those one by one, and then we can set um, a material for the whole model after I've deleted all of these. So now that they're all gone, I'm going to press to add a new one. I'm going to change under surface from diffuse BSDF to principled BSDF. That gives us a little more accurate um, color shading, um, just makes it kind of more realistic with the principled shader. And with this base color option, now we can change the color of the model. So let's set this one to, I don't know, let's go with a light blue, just like that. And you can see it's not changing anything right now. To see those changes, we'd have to change the viewport shading to rendered. 
So I'm going to do that right now and show you what happens. This is like a render preview and then later on we'll go and do the final render. Alright, so we've got our blue lattice cube. As you can tell, our scene is really dark. So we're going to have to add some lighting. So to do that, I'm going to change it back to solid. And let's delete this default point lamp that it's added in here. Again, press X to delete and then enter. And we'll add in some lamps of our own. So to do that, I'm going to click add lamp. And I'll add in a sun lamp. With the sun lamp, it doesn't actually matter the location of it because it applies uniform lighting across the whole scene. Just to get it out of the way, I'm going to move it up a little bit. And then I'm also going to add some directional lighting. So I'll add in an area light on the side. Actually, I'll do an area light on both sides and see how that goes. So I've just clicked add lamp area and that's added in this one here. I'm going to press G, Z again to lift it up and then S to scale it up. And you can see it's starting to draw a little box there. I'm going to move this to the side, R, X, rotating it in that X axis. And I'm going to just press G, Y to move it to the side. And I'm going to press G, Z to move it down a little bit. Just repositioning this a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side right here. So again, I'm going to go add lamp area, G, Z to move it up, S to scale it up. And then I'm going to rotate R along the Y axis this way. It's important when you rotate, make sure this line is facing towards your model. That's direct the direction of the light. So now G, X, move it over here, GZ, move it down a little bit. All right, let's see how that looks. Actually, I'm just going to angle this one in a little bit. Let's go R, uh, Y again. Let's angle it down towards the model. I might do the same with this one. So again, we can click down here and change the viewport shading to rendered. And I'm going to press zero to look through the view of the camera. So that's looking much brighter right now. Now to then further change uh, the lighting, we can change the strength of each light. So if I want uh, the left side lighting to be more dominant, this one, I've got that selected. Inside, inside the uh, object data panel here, I can turn up the strength. So let's say I set this one to 300 and I'm gonna keep this one at 100. Whoop, this one. Um, let's see how that looks now. Go back to rendered and view through the camera. All right, so now we've got a bit of contrast. This left side here is a bit lighter. We've got some darker sides um, over here. I might turn up the sun lamp a little bit just to add some overall lighting to the scene. So I'm going to select the sun here. Maybe double it. Okay, and you can keep playing around with these things however you like. Um, I'm definitely not a blender expert. I've just showing off what I've learned in the short time that I've been using the software. But this is where you um, play around with all your lighting, positioning, camera angles, anything like this. And then after that, we go into the final render. So to do that, we'll click the render tab over here. And here is all the settings that you can change. So we've got our resolution, 1920 by 1080, and this percentage here. So if you actually want it to render at this resolution, this percentage needs to be set to 100. Then one other thing that I change sometimes is sampling. 
If you find you're getting lots of noise in your images, you can go and change your sampling. So here it's got 128 samples. Sometimes I bump this all the way up to 300 for a high quality render. <clears throat> and then to get the render going, we press this button. One last thing I'm going to mention is with a toolpath preview like this, if we render it just like this, we're not really going to be able to see uh, the layer heights, sorry, the individual layers, the individual extrusions on the top solid infill or anything like this, just because it's so zoomed out. So if you did want to show off um, those kind of features, I'd recommend zooming in maybe um, on certain features of your model and then running a render of that. But just for now, just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to start a render of this. So I'll just click render here. And this is where it starts rendering. <clears throat> you can see you've got a progress bar up here and it also gives you a recommended, sorry, a, a estimated time until it'll be finished. So you can see right now it's estimating 27 hours. That'll slow down a little bit. Or maybe 27 minutes. Um, yeah, it's starting to render our model here. And then you just have to leave this. And when you're happy with it, you can go down here, image, um, save as image once it's finished will become available. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of other renders that I've done, including this one when it's finished. Um, show off what you can do with this and that'll be it. That's going to do it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.